The early signing period has come and gone, and the Florida Gators signed 20 high school athletes who will be immediate contributors. We'll talk about it here on Locked On Gators. You are Locked On Gators, your daily podcast on the Florida Gators. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Lockdown Gators, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Lockdown Gators your first listen of the day. We're available daily and free wherever you listen to podcasts. Happy Tuesday. Hope you all had an awesome holiday weekend. I'm Brandon Olson. Twitter is WNS underscore Brandon. Find my written work at whole nine sports and giants country fsi.com. And we're going to get right into it today. Um, no, no fluff. Florida Gators. Sign their recruiting class right now, like like right now on, on Tuesday. They're the number 12 class in the country. They've got 20 high school kids signed. They have no commits that aren't already signed for the scholarship section. Um, and tomorrow we'll talk about transfers and what's going on in Gainesville with all that stuff. Um, but there's some stuff that I'm double checking that I want to have confirmed or denied before it's time to actually talk about it. So tomorrow we'll talk about what's going on with Michael Tarquin, uh, Ethan White, Travis Johnson, everything else, Billy Napier, some other rumors, whatever. Uh, But for today, we're talking about these recruits that could come in and make an immediate impact. And the first name for me, I don't want to say first name as if this is a ranking, it's just three names um but roger kearney is is the name that we're going to talk about first the offensive line for florida went from the strength aside from maybe the running back room to okay well currently we don't have osiris torrance for next year we don't have richard garage for next year we don't have ethan white for next year we don't have michael tarpin for next year the only returning full season starter is Kingsley Aguakin, which we all know how I feel about him. Spoiler alert, not great, Bob. Um, And Austin Barber will also be here. Of course, there's guys like Cameron Waits, who has high hopes, or Florida at least, has high hopes for him. Uh, You can talk about guys like Richie Leonard IV, who rotated in, and he uh, he was even the starter in, I forgot which game it was, maybe Tennessee, but when Osiris Torrance couldn't play, Richie Leonard IV was the guy that that took that starting spot for that time. So you, you've got some guys with some experience. Uh, of course, Josh Braun would have been great to have right about now, but obviously he is no longer a Florida Gator. Um, Cameron Waits, we, we saw him play guard a bit in the bowl game, or we saw him start at guard in the bowl game. We'll see if he plays tackle next year or guard. Um, also, I know Nick De La Torre was the one that reported it, that Ethan White and Michael Tarquin, doors not shut on them coming to Florida. Um, we they're, they're looking for NIL deals, and they're going to see what they can get on the open market. We'll see what happens. Uh, you could see Jake Slaughter play, Christian Williams play, but it, it's a bunch of guys now who we don't know a ton of. Because even, even Cameron Waits, he played less than 100 snaps this year. So even Cameron Waits, the guy who we're like, oh, well, he could be good, hasn't played. So we're not really sure. So Roger Kearney is someone where you're a high-ranked offensive lineman. You're a pretty dang good recruit. You're you're size-wise, you're build, you're good to go right now. So Roger Kearney is someone who, at any spot along the offensive line, could find himself being kind of thrust into there to be a starter or a rotational player, which Florida does rotate players on the offensive line if they feel like they have the guys to do that. Next up on the defensive side of the ball, Jakeem Jackson is a guy. Fantastic size, fantastic athleticism, length, and with his skill set, he is capable of playing multiple spots in the secondary. I will say I think Jakeem Jackson, I, I don't know what it is about him, but every time I watch him, I'm like, man, 
he should be playing star for Florida, which it's possible that he plays star for Florida because, of course, Trevez Johnson, the incumbent starter, is in the transfer portal right now, which we'll talk about it more tomorrow, but I can tell you there's at least one SEC team that has been in contact with Trevez, so it's possible that he stays in the SEC. It's the SEC West, um, but it's possible that Trevez stays in the SEC, so Jakeem Jackson could step in and replace him. Or you could look at safety. Yes, right now it looks like Rashad Torrance and probably Kamari Wilson are the favorites to be starting next year. Something could happen where Rashad Torrance is probably more likely to leave than Kamari Wilson, but Rashad Torrance might not be here. Um, Anything could happen at this point, right? We've seen enough guys leave the program (laughs) to be like, oh, well, nothing would shock me. Um, So Rashad Torrance could go. You've got maybe Kamari Wilson comes down to play more of a linebacker spot with all the linebackers missing next year, which I don't think happens. I think Kamari's going to stay at safety like he should. But Jakeem Jackson can play multiple slots in the secondary. You could use him as the chess piece. Jakeem Jackson is what I had hoped Trey Dean would become. Great length, great athleticism. Let him match up against big slot receivers, big outside receivers. Let him match up against a tight end and let him just be an eraser there. Hopefully we see that with Jakeem Jackson and the final player where I think he's going to step in and make a big immediate impact. Also next segment, we're talking about guys who like rotational players. You could also keep them in the immediate impact section. If you think they are an immediate impact player or whatever you qualify as an immediate impact, but next Aiden Mizell, the last guy we're going to talk about in this segment. Aiden Mizell is of course, a speed demon. He's immediately the top, I want to say top two fastest player on the team. He's three to five at the absolute worst, but I feel like he's going to be top two. Uh, So you've immediately got someone who is a complete speed demon. He's a monster. Let him run. He should be playing early and often, especially when you look at Justin Shorter on the outside, no longer there. Xavier Henderson on the outside, underwhelmed. Caleb Douglas on the outside. He, I think he's, I think he's very good. Uh, but Florida rotates the receivers, so you've got a role for Aiden Mizell. Desperately needs speed at wide receiver as well. You've got Ricky Pearsall, but that's about it when you look at who's actually going to be playing wide receiver for the Florida Gators in 2023. So Aiden Mizell, someone who should step in right away, a speed threat, could threaten all three levels, but most importantly, could threaten deep where Florida hasn't been as good as they should have been. Also, Florida wasn't aggressive as they should have been. When you have someone with Aiden Mizell's speed, you instantly have to respect it. That's what it was when you know Tyreek Hill was first blowing up. It was like, well, even, even if he doesn't attack you, His speed means you have to play defense differently, and it means that they're going to threaten you in multiple ways. So Aiden Mizell could be that guy. I'm not saying he's Tyreek Hill, of course, but Aiden Mizell could be that that speed guy that just makes you respect everything over the top. And we're about to talk about some guys who are going to be more rotational, depth, whatever you want to call it early on. But first, today's episode of Locked On Gators is brought to you by LinkedIn. And as the sun comes out and small businesses are back in business, LinkedIn Jobs makes it easier for you to grow your team. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find people that you want to interview faster and for free and helps you find people that you potentially want to hire with simple tools like screening questions. It makes it easier for you to find those candidates so you're not wasting your time just looking at people who are way underqualified and just aren't what you're looking for at all. And every week, nearly 40 million job seekers visit LinkedIn. So plenty of fish in the sea there. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free terms and conditions apply. Thanks again for making locked on Gators your first listen of the day. We're available daily and free wherever you listen to the podcast. And we're sticking with wide receiver here to talk about the rotational depth guys. Eugene Wilson, the third is the first name that comes up here. Um, mainly because I think that I think Eugene Wilson, the third might be the most complete wide receiver in this Florida Gators recruiting class. I know that Eugene Wilson, the third is a receiver that a lot of Gators fans are very high on. And a lot of evaluators are very high on. 
but pretty much unanimously, Eugene Wilson III is thought of as someone who is best suited to work out of the slot. So the reason I think that Eugene Wilson III is listed, or will be listed more as a rotational or depth piece is because Florida will hopefully still have Ricky Pearsall on roster. Um, I say hopefully because, like I said earlier, anything could happen. I'm not going to project crazy things happening. But also, you could argue it's in Ricky Pearsall's best interest to go to the NFL draft. I don't think it is, but you could argue that it's in his best interest. I don't care. Don't don't bring up production. That's not a thing that I care about. Um, but the tape is there. Whether or not he got thrown the ball, Ricky Pearsall was consistently creating separation from his defenders he was often the target of an inaccurate anthony richardson pass and anthony richardson specifically brought up ricky pearsall when he was like hey i forget how fast ricky pearsall is i forget how quick he could accelerate and so i'll under throw a ball or i'll throw it behind him because i'm forgetting he can get to where he needs to get to um so with ricky pearsall i think staying in gainesville and Playing probably again, primarily out of the slot, Eugene Wilson III will likely have to wait for a year before he can even really compete for a starting spot. I know that we talk about Billy Napier giving snaps to guys who deserve it. Eugene Wilson III could earn snaps and could get snaps, but he's not going to take a starting spot from Ricky Pearsall unless he is sensational immediately. Um, so Eugene Wilson III is the first guy on this list that I'm saying rotational or depth. Next is Kelby Collins on the defensive line. He's the second highest rated guy for Florida. By the way, Jaden Rashada not being mentioned in this episode, um, mainly because I know that he's probably going to be involved in the quarterback competition to start the year. Uh, I don't think he's going to get it, even if he does look pretty good, because he is insanely thin. I feel like that's just asking him to get injured early on. And then, of course... 2024 is DJ Lagway time, so it's hard to project what's going to happen with Jaden Rashada, although we know he's going to be a Gator. He signed the letter of intent, so he'll be there at least. Um, but Kelby Collins, you could put him in the immediate impact spot, but similar to Eugene Wilson III, as good as I think they both are and as good as I think they both will be early on in their season, in their careers, like I, I think that they can both contribute on day one, I just don't think that they're going to be these huge impact players that are playing, you know, more than 50% of the snaps or anything like that. But with Kelby Collins, it's mainly because he's not going to be playing nose tackle. You know, he's, I think, 280 pounds, so he's not going to be playing nose tackle. He's likely going to be playing that interior defensive line spot. Uh, he's heavier than everybody else that plays defensive end He's heavier than everybody that plays Jack linebacker. And he's probably going to be sticking more towards that interior, that defensive end spot that Jervon Dexter plays. That's really just a deta that's really just a three tech um, and a D tackle. So there's that. But Kelby Collins is going to be behind Chris McClellan, who is a standout true freshman defensive lineman for the Florida Gators, and Caleb Banks, who of course just transferred to the Florida Gators. From Louisville, defensive tackle, supposed to be a pass rushing specialist. Chris McClellan did it all. Chris McClellan was arguably the second best interior defensive lineman on the Florida Gators in 2022 when he was on the field. Obviously, the sample size is significantly smaller than Javon Dexter and Desmond Watson and, and most other D tackles. But Chris McClellan played both D tackle spots pretty seamlessly. So maybe the way that Kelby Collins gets on the field is Des Watson, Desmond Watson comes off the field. Chris McClellan goes on the field at that nose tackle spot. And Kelby Collins comes in to spell Caleb Banks, who's probably going to be starting at three tech if it's not Chris McClellan. So Kelby Collins, I think he's just going to be, I think he's in a weird spot where he's not going to play all four defensive line positions and he's playing a position like, like he's playing one specific position he shouldn't be lining up at nose tackle unless it's some kind of nascar package he shouldn't be lining up at defensive end replacing Prin princely uman Ellen because you've got guys like justice boone you've got other people who should be playing that spot and he's not going to be playing jack linebacker because he's you know 30 pounds heavier than the next jack linebacker uh so 
Kelby Collins likely going to be playing kind of strictly that three tech D D end spot in the three, four that Javon Dexter played. And there there's bodies there. So Kelby Collins rotational depth, but still a contributor. I think that's why he's not in the immediate impact spot though. And the final person for the rotational and depth spot, Jaden Robinson linebacker, who not one of Florida's highest ranked recruits, but I think Jaden Robinson size wise, is, is kind of close to a few Gators linebackers who, by the way, are lighter than I'd like them to be. Uh, but Jaden Robinson could stand to gain a few pounds. Great frame, though. Great frame for Jaden Robinson. Uh, with how thin this linebacker room is, both in terms of actual talent and their physical bodies, they're thin, and there's not a lot of linebackers on the team. Um, he's capable of rotating in early, I think. I, I don't know how we would look at Jaden Robinson playing, you know, six to 10 snaps a game and go, Oh, that's such a bad decision. At least you're getting someone who's proven throughout high school. He can be a defensive playmaker. Uh, Billy Napier, I think said it in his last press conference where he's like, Hey, Jaden Robinson at seven defensive touchdowns or, or a defensive touchdown, at least a defensive touchdown, seven weeks in a row or seven games in a row. That's insane. And you, you kind of just put someone like that, on the field. So I think when you look at his current skill set, when you look at he's not much lighter than the Florida Gators linebackers already are. And and honestly, that 221, he could bulk that up kind of significantly from the time from now until the start of the season. So Jaden Robinson is someone that I think could be a surprise early rotational player. Um wouldn't want him starting, but he's definitely someone that I think could rotate in early. And just, again, play, you know, six to ten snaps per game early on, maybe take out a bigger role later. But I think he's someone that we're going to see contribute kind of early in Gainesville. And we're about to talk about guys who I think are longer-term projects, so I don't want you to get your hopes up because we do that a lot. But first, today's episode of Locked on Gators, brought to you by the NHTSA. And, look, I'm an open book here. I'm not even going to say I think. I'm an open book here. I lost a team in mine in April 2021. We are in the season right now where there is more drunk driving than you'll ever see because guess what? It's cold outside. People aren't walking to the bar. People are driving. Guess what? It's the holidays. People are all seeing their old friends. They're all going out. They're getting drunk. So when you're seeing those friends and when you're hanging out with those friends and you're you're putting a few back, which is no problem. Go ahead. Do that. That's your prerogative. But then you're getting ready to leave and you're like, oh, I could drive drunk. I'm a good drunk driver. No, I can get home. I'm fine. I'm not even that drunk. That's stupid. The results are tragic and often deadly. That doesn't stop people from going out because people are just like, oh, I don't want to get a ticket. There are way more important things here. Cops are going out. They're going to pull you over. They're saving lives by doing that. So drive sober or get pulled over. To wrap up today's show, we're talking about some longer term projects and games. And again, this isn't me saying that they're not good enough to play. I don't want to make that be the thing. It's just that there are some things that are probably going to hold them back. Like Trayon Webb is the first name we're talking about where Gators fans know him. Gators fans love him. He's very active on Twitter. He's the one doing all the recruiting and doing all that fun stuff. Um, but you got a stacked running back room right now. Florida didn't play three running backs except for early in the year when Naquan Wright was actually seeing time. Then it became the Montreal and Trevor Etienne show, and that was that. So I don't think that you're going to go, okay, yeah, let's bring in the freshman running back and let him play when we have Trevor Etienne, who as a freshman was phenomenal. And when you have uh, Montreal Johnson, who as a freshman was phenomenal. It's a stacked running back room in the sense of you've got two elite talents in there. Also, Trayon Webb is listed at six foot one, 205 pounds. He's been banged up throughout high school. He had these little, these little uh, like nagging injuries or these little, he, up, he got banged up here in the game. That's pretty thin for an SEC running back. Like, like, six, like 205 pounds is fine. That's basically what Trevor Etienne is. But Trevor Etienne is also like four inches shorter than Trey on Webb. Six foot one, 205 pounds is so thin for a running back. I think Trey on Webb's going to have to add some weight. I get it. He's a do it all back. He's got a great skill set, but I, I don't see him earning playing time in this running back room just because it's so good. And I think he's very thin. I think that Florida's going to say, Hey man, like we gotta, we gotta bulk you up. You gotta gain like 10 pounds, 15 pounds before we can really give you a fair share of the workload. Next up is Gavin Hill, defensive lineman Gainesville's very own. Um, 
as it is right now, Gavin Hill is listed at 255 pounds, which puts him in no man's land. That's just not a spot that Florida has, the defensive line. That, that's Florida tight end weight. That's what Florida has their tight end room. So when you look at 255 pounds, that makes Gavin Hill too heavy to play Jack linebacker role that we saw Brenton Cox and that we saw uh, Antoine Powell Ryland and Lloyd Sermol. That makes Gavin Hill a bit too heavy to play that role. Then you look at the defensive end spot. That's actually a defensive end spot where Prince Liam on plays. 255 is a fine weight there but you're going to have a good deal of competition, and I'm not sure you're going to carve out a role early, especially because I think Prince Liamon Mielin is going to be one of those guys who plays a ton of snaps next year. He is incredibly talented. I think he's going to play a ton of snaps at that defensive end spot. I had someone that I know who evaluates for the NFL draft, and he was like, hey, man, is Prince Lee declaring for the draft? Which, from what I've been told, no, he's not. But they were like, hey, man, is Prince Lee declaring for the draft? And I was like, no, I don't think so. And he goes, okay, well, he's the best player on that entire defense. So there are people who are very high on Prince Lee Amon and He's incredibly talented. I think he's going to play a ton of snaps on that defensive line. I think he rotates the least out of everybody. And Gavin Hill at 255 pounds, way too light to play on the interior. So I think the biggest thing for Gavin Hill is going to be, hey, man, like this first year, we're just going to find out what role you play. We're going to try to get you to that weight that that gets you effective in that role. Maybe it's just, hey, you sit for a year and next year when Princely's in the NFL, you can compete at that spot. But for the most part, it's Princely's spot. That that, like Princely runs that spot. So Gavin Hill, I I don't think talent-wise is necessarily an issue, but I think he's just at a weird weight to play any of these spots uh, on the Florida Gators defensive front. Last player, Bryce Lovett, who I like Bryce Lovett. I do. Uh, I just think skill-wise and his physical build-wise, I think he's just going to need time to get up to the SEC level. Again, I I think that for a true freshman, that's uh, the lowest or second lowest ranked commit in this class. I think he's solid. I think he's better than he gets the ranking credit for. But again, skill wise and physical build wise, he's got to change his body. I I think that's, I don't think he's necessarily too heavy, too light. I think he's just got not clean weight from what I've seen of him. I think he's got not clean weight where he can kind of trim it down, replace it with muscle and be like, okay, I'm the same weight, but guess what? I'm a hell of a lot stronger right now. Uh, So I think with Bryce Lovett, that's kind of what you're looking at. Not necessarily a a real talent concern, but he's also not SEC ready talent wise. He's, he's not bad. He's just not SEC caliber ready. But thank you for making Lockdown Gators your first listen of the day. Every day we're available daily and free wherever you listen to podcasts. If you're traveling home, be safe, be careful. We'll be back tomorrow. Talk more Florida Gators football. We'll talk about what in the world is going on in Gainesville. For Lockdown Gators, I'm Brandon Olson. Follow me on Twitter at WNS underscore Brandon. Find my written work with Whole Nine Sports and Giants Country of SI.com. And I'll see you all tomorrow.